Yes guys, welcome back to Kosi's Astro Podcast. My name is Kosi. How are you guys doing? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in all parts of the world. Roll to 50,000 subscribers, so make sure you're hitting the subscribe button. Make sure you're hitting this, um, the like button as well. Like I said, I want to make content for the first 50,000 subscribers. So if you're not part of those yet, make sure you subscribe because after the curtain closes, those are the first people I want to make content for in the coming years. The first 50,000 subscribers. We're going to talk about a couple of things, especially UEFA, um, saying that they're going to punish um, English clubs. That means us, not that participated in the um, European Super League. We also have um, reports from Sky Sports around um, Daniel X takeover, as well as Gillian Brand. Uh, what could, or Gillian Brand, what could be... Um, the, the latest news around Brandt and Arsenal. So, we're going to talk about much of that. Um, let's start off with the UEFA and uh, their punishments. Uh, of course, they, they, they say that uh, as UEFA announced changes, the Champions League uh, to allow sides like us who can't qualify on the pitch because they are rubbish, uh, a route back in the top club competition, as they were, um, were off trying to set up their own league with, um, with, with the almost instant collapse of the Super League, Arsenal could well have scrapped their chances of claiming an extra spot with UEFA now considering taking them away. Quite um, quite what punishments the clubs will face is yet to be determined, but Seferain has said that in um, that the English clubs who are who are the first to pull out uh, will likely be treated as will, will not be treated as harshly as the flat Athens, Real Madrid and Barcelona who continue to hope that the Super League will be going on such as their as such is their financial uh, desperation according to uh, the UEFA president he said everyone has to, uh, has to take consequences of what they did we cannot pretend that nothing happened Severin said in the mail on sunday but for me it's clear between the english clubs and the other uh, and the other six uh, they are pulled out first they admitted they had a, they made a mistake they have um they, you have some greatness um to say i was wrong but everyone will be held responsible in what we will see like he said so basically of course you know we expected punishment and i agree all the you know all these clubs need need, need to be punished i mean you can't just pretend nothing happened you just can't pretend that um everything was okay you've got to feel it you've got to make them feel it that what you're doing what you are trying to do was wrong you're trying to hurt football you're trying to hurt uh, millions and millions of people but again when you come out and say that english clubs are gonna get smaller punishments than the rest of the six that it, it, it highlights the loopholes in uefa it highlights why UEFA are not saints, and, and, and it highlights my point why, when we were talking about the Super League. When I said that, for me, I think these, you know, these clubs are, you know, are, are doing all this club, you know, are, are doing all this shit because of UEFA. The mis, the mismanagement in UEFA. I mean, we all know English clubs are powerful. We all know how powerful they are. We all know um, the amount of money, um, you know, that, that that is associated with English football. Nobody's gonna take it in a way that UEFA is punishing him, you know, punishing you, you know, um, English clubs lace because because they pulled out fast. Everyone is gonna think, you know, UEFA is trying to punish them lace because of the money, because they have, the, because of their influence, because of the influence of the Premier League, and that's where you, you know, UEFA got it wrong. These were twelve clubs that announced simultaneously that they had joined the Super League simultaneously at thirty minutes past. Uh, past midnight uk time all of them took the to, took to their websites and they announced the next day all of them simultaneously pulled out of the you know the european club association that means everything they were doing was planned everything they were doing was you know was on paper it was run it, it wasn't random and some clubs like arsenal coming out to say that we didn't know about this we did create this we were called you know we were just called upon we we're tagging along that is bullshit that's nonsense because why did Bayern tag along because Bayern is bigger Bayern would have been guaranteed more money why so this is a lot of bullshit from uefa and, and, and these are the decisions we've been talking about um in football from fifa and uefa when it comes to racism when it comes to punishment uefa is literally folding their hands they were making a lot of noise 
creating sanctions when these clubs were in the, uh, you know, in the European Super League. But now that the money has come back to them, what they are literally saying is, okay, you know what? We don't care. Fuck off. As long as they have come back, the money is back. You know, we could as well just forget it. Because if you're saying that this, the, the six clubs in England are not going to get their same, you know, punishment as the six, uh, as the uh, the rest of the the, the the category in Spain and 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 Italy. It doesn't make sense. It, it really doesn't make sense. The, it, 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 it only shows you that you want to punish AC Milan. You want to make them an example. Because after all you care is AC Milan has fallen. They don't have, they're not going to give you a lot of money. There's, I mean, you're not getting a lot of money from Inter Milan. You're not getting a lot of money from, uh, from AC Milan. And then because uh, English p clubs are, are powerful, you're afraid of them. That's what it, 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 truly, you know, it, it literally means. You are afraid of them. And for me, it really doesn't make a lot of sense. It doesn't make a lot of sense. I, th I would have thought, what you ever should have done, if you want to punish heavily, punish them all. If you want to punish lightly, punish them all. Don't, don't come up with these excuses that don't make a lot of sense. But anyway, uh, well, let us talk about Daniel X takeover. Uh, what we know uh, so far, uh, yesterday Sky did confirm that um, Daniel X is open to a governed you know or governance um where you have fans represented on the board uh he's very very interested in that i'm going to be uh clipping those pieces i think um they're from the af asc afc staff um and i'll be trying to clip clip th th those pieces and tr try to react to them and i'll tell you what i know and what i expect uh of daniel x takeover when we are not live because um i really enjoy these are pre-recorded shows they really give me a lot of time to speak about things um you know without you guys you know getting in the way but let's talk about julian brandit for a second because um probably that was my uh my big deal of the day brandit has been um or brand has been one of those players that have been linked with us now uh for the past I think for the past two years, ever since uh, he, he was at Leverkusen, then now uh, crossing over to Dortmund, actually three years because I think he spent around two years at, at Dortmund. But it looks like Dortmund are not going to use him. It, it, it doesn't look like he's go he has a big future at Arsenal. And um, with Martin Odegaard being a doubt whether he will stay in the summer or leave in the summer, it's still a, a very big doubt. Now, we, we, we have to look at other options are available. And Arsenal is looking at uh, Gillian Brand. Now, according to The Sun, they're saying that... Um, Arsenal are lining up with 22 million bids uh, for Julian Brandt um, uh, for Julian Brandt transfer as a plan B to Martin Odegaard after Real Madrid make him untouchable. Um, Arsenal are lining up a 22 million bid um, for Dortmund star Julian Brandt according to reports. It's believed the Gunners have identified the German international as a replacement for Real Madrid Loni uh, Martin Odegaard. According to the German newspaper Bild, Arsenal will activate Brandt's release clause which is 22 million pounds if they cannot sign Odegaard. Um, Odegaard, who joined the Premier League side on loan in January, has been excellent. Um, has been an excellent addition to Mikel Arteta's squad scoring twice in the league. Spanish newspaper Marca have described the creative midfielder as an untouchable, one of the four players Real Madrid want to build their next team around. Um, if, if, if they sell to us, Madrid, I won't be surprised. They, they have had um, the European Super League crumble. They don't have money. They have um, a, a debt that is close to 900 million. So if they sell to us in, um, in, in a plan to rebuild, uh, try to get in some quality players, probably I won't be surprised. If they don't let him go because they do not have money to buy new players and they have um, such a potential, still I wouldn't be surprised. I still, I, I, I still think I'm one of those people who are very, very, very um, optimistic he will sign now. You remember with how Samoa in the summer, I was so optimistic that he'll sign. And um, most of you do attack me by the way for that. You know, because you said how Samoa will sign. But I'm still optimistic with um, with Martin Odegaard. I think it, it will depend on our negotiation and the amount of money we, you know, we have. If we have 30 million, less than 45 million, he's not going to sign for Arsenal. Never. But if you have 50 and above, 45 and above... Um, you have a chance to sign Martin Odegaard. But Brand is also a very good player. He's a very, very good player. And um, according to Team Talk, uh, they're saying that um, the player wants to be unleashed as a number 10. So this is why they've said that uh, while, uh, while, while, Blunt, uh, while, while Brand can play in a variety of positions across the front line, the 35 times capped German has outlined his preferred draw. Um, he has operated on the left wing as a deeply lying forward 
and an out and out striker during his time in the Bundesliga. However, speaking back in, de uh, in December 2019, he stated he, he, um, he prefers to operate as a number 10. He said, for me, it's optimal. I feel really good there. He told, this, he told the sports build. Um, I waited a long time to be able to show what I can do in the middle. When I played up top, I was also in, uh, in a central position. But playing as a striker wasn't easy for me. I'm not, I'm no player like Lome Lukaku. I wouldn't say I was in the slump before, but I sense I'm, um, I'm on my way back to my old strength. And I feel really, really good on the pitch. Um, if you've seen Brandt, He's exciting. You, you know, he's, he's he's one of those you know exciting players. You, you know you, you're gonna have to see. He's, he's he's a good player, but again, Odegaard is, is is a little bit ahead of him. I, I just think the beauty with Martin Odegaard is he controls games, and and, and that's why I, I I want to see. I want to get a player like Martin Odegaard, not because of anything. I think his beauty as a player is his ability. To control games there's not so many players that control games and that's why i really like jack grealish the, uh, you know that's what i like jack grealish for he's um he's a player that will control that ge games for he's a player that you know gives you a lot a lot you know in, in terms of game control and, and and um and that's what odegaard gives you brand doesn't have it brand doesn't have it emmy Buende doesn't have it as well but let's wait and see in the summer what will actually happen we'll come back with more of you I i'll come back with more of um the Arsenal takeover. I should have done um, an episode of Arsenal Sensible Transfers today. Um, I look into it. So stay safe until we meet at 5 30 p.m. That will be around 3 30 UK time.